Oh my gosh. It's like nano banana, but the character consistency is insane. OpenAI just released GPT Image 1.5 and it's now on our list. GPT Image 1.5 comes with four times faster generation speeds, precision editing so you can change little tiny things about images similar to Nano Banana Pro. It also is incredible at generating text, which is something that AI is notoriously terrible at. If you like breaking down AI filmmaking and seeing how you can apply it to your work, make sure to subscribe to the Artlist YouTube channel. We're making more stuff like this. I know it's gonna be helpful for you. And since it's the holiday season, can we recreate the iconic sad little Christmas tree scene from Charlie Brown Christmas? I wanna see if GPT image 1.5 can actually help me think like a filmmaker, not just generate random images for fun. Number one, storyboarding. When we're generating something from scratch, everything starts with prompting. The more complex your prompt is, the more accurate your images will be. The first prompt that I generated was just a vibe prompt, or you could call it the master prompts, the style prompt. It's just a prompt that I can apply across the board so that the images have some consistency. I wanna look for a live action Christmas scene movie, sorta 1960s era. I want it to feel like film, like Ralph Lauren. So everything's real homemade feeling, very homey and cozy and we created a prompt that we can use across the board. Now we want some kind of character consistency as we're moving the camera around and storyboarding and blocking the scene. So we needed a full body prompt for our characters. So we have a prompt for Charlie Brown, Lucy, Linus, and I think we also did Snoopy. Snoopy's not even in this scene, but you, you gotta generate a little Snoopy. We need our beagle. We need him. So we got the master image, Snoopy, Charlie, Linus, Lucy, all there, ready to go. Sometimes the color grading was a little bit too realistic. The lighting was a little bit too harsh. So I had to upload this image and then also upload my master prompt so that I could change the vibe to that warm sepia 1960s look and everything looked consistent and great. It was beautiful. So after we finished our master image prompts and our character sheets, it was time to generate the actual storyboard. So I used ChatGPT to help me generate prompts of nine different shots that play out the sad little tree scene. I would take this prompt and then also add on the master prompt so that everything looks consistent and it has the same vibe. The first shot is the most important. We did an establishing shot of the entire Christmas tree farm. And we used that shot over and over again as a reference image for the setting where the scene takes place. And whenever I was generating the first versions of all of these scenes, I would use text to image, upload my shot prompt and the master prompt. The reason that I love using GPT image 1.5 for storyboarding is speed is everything. We can do three images at a time and it's the intersection of the fastest and best image generation out there. So we can iterate really quick and put it all together in a jiffy. I went and rewatched the beginning of the scene, but I didn't want to create it shot for shot. So I was trying to avoid it, but I was also trying to make it sort of accurate. And I realized that Linus is there with Charlie Brown throughout the scene. So I was like, all right, Linus has got to be there. So we added him in to the second shot. I have an image of Charlie Brown by himself as the second shot and then have an image with him and Linus. So to wrap up storyboarding, you need your character images, your master image, all your storyboarding prompts, and then use those character images and that master vibe image as reference points or a wide shot from the scene so you can create consistency as you build out your scene with storyboarding. And so I did this throughout all the shots. The second thing that's so great about using GPT image 1.5 is you can get very granular with the details and edit stuff while keeping everything else the same. For example, on this second shot, the first one that I did, we have Linus and Charlie together. Linus is like clutching his blanket and Charlie's holding the tree already. Linus is known for dragging the blanket behind. So we wanted him dragging the blanket. We don't want Charlie holding the tree yet. So we went through a couple iterations and I was able to get him to stop holding the tree and Linus to actually drag the blanket. Perfect. I can actually direct the characters to do specifically what I want in the scene. So good. On this shot, when we have this reverse of them looking at all the trees, it's supposed to evoke an overwhelming feeling, like there's way too many trees, it's scary, we don't know what to do, everything looks so big, they look so small. That's the vibe that we were going for. But the first images that I generated didn't actually match the scene super well. So I actually generated a brand new wide shot of the Christmas tree farm, and then I put that in as an image reference. So what you can do is you can use image to image, put the wide shot of the Christmas tree farm as a location reference, 
reference. Then we have Charlie Brown and Linus. We wanna put both of those in as character references. And then we can describe the kind of scene that we're looking for. Sometimes when I'd put extreme wide shot, it would be more so like a full shot. Like it wasn't really that far away. So sometimes putting low drone shot actually really helped me in the prompting to get the wideness that I was going for. And so once I got the shot actually wide enough, the tree was way too big. And I was really struggling actually to shrink the tree down to make everything look completely right. We got there pretty close and I was able to, you know, remove simple things like Linus was holding the blanket. He shouldn't be holding the blanket because the blanket's now supposed to be wrapped around the tree. Now, speaking of iteration, halfway through, I realized that Charlie Brown and Linus weren't wearing the exact same clothes when they went to the Christmas tree farm from the animated film. They were wearing clothes that were a little bit more likened to their traditional default outfits. But what if I all of a sudden wanted them to have the exact same outfits that they had in the film. All I had to do was upload an image that I already created. And then I actually took a screenshot from the Charlie Brown Christmas film. And I said something like, put the kid on the left in the clothes of the guy on the right of the second image, make it look realistic. Also put the kid on the right in the guy clothes of the guy on the left in the second image, but make the clothes look realistic. The final image should look like the first image. We had Charlie and Linus, and then we had the other image from the animated film and they were switched. So I had to like tell GPT image where everybody was. It actually made their outfits so well. Now it wasn't perfect. It missed Charlie's hat. So we had to add the hat, button up the jackets, and then we got there just with a few iterations. I also made the blanket a little bit more blue. Like it's so easy to take an image that you already have and just change little things about it, especially when it comes to clothes or facial expressions or things like that. Speaking of facial expressions, I was able to make Charlie look mad, make him look calm, make him look in a, in a longing way towards his friends. This shot is the moment where Charlie's kind of defending his tree and the fact that he likes it even though everybody else is making fun of him. And so I, I made him super mad. <laughs> but um, we got something that was a little bit more subtle where he's sort of in conflict. Linus is in the background all ashamed and he's trying to figure out, okay, what should I do? Now, the last and probably most impressive thing that GPT image is absolutely revolutionizing is the ability to handle text and graphics. So here's my finished storyboard and it's all ready to go. I just had to throw Snoopy at the end because I couldn't have Snoopy not be in the scene. But now we need a title for the very beginning. What I found to be the most helpful is actually finding reference images for the kind of text that you want. So I went on Pinterest, typed in Ralph Lauren Christmas and found a few different images that looked very nice very classic Christmas decor. And then I uploaded that into Artlist and image to image, selected GPT image 1.5, and told it to just change the text to Charlie Brown Christmas. Make it glowy, make it on a black background, and it gave me this. It looks beautiful. Then I took the wide shot and this image with the black background, and I said, combine the images, remove the black background, and it gave me this. Look at this. This thing is beautiful. The way that it just blends into the image, it looks absolutely gorgeous. We did it so fast with GPT image 1.5. That's just a really quick way so that you can see what's possible with having complex text and then also getting it animated. But we have the title, it swirls in, Charlie and Linus are walking, they're wanting to get a Christmas tree. There's so many Christmas trees. It's scary. And then they look down and notice, oh, there's this little tree. Charlie Brown really likes this little tree. He loves it. And then all of a sudden Lucy and some of her other friends are there. And she's like, what the frick? Charlie Brown, that tree is terrible. And Charlie's like, but I like it. And Linus is ashamed. And then we crossfade and they all decorate it together. Some more people come into the Christmas tree farm because they like the little tree and then the end. And then we're just gonna show a little shot of Snoopy because we gotta have him in there, bro. So let's give it the ranking. Were we able to complete the storyboard? Yes. Does it look good? It looks pretty solid, especially for a storyboard. It's great for storyboarding, pre-viz, pitch decks, temp graphics, visual exploration. Incredible. Now, the weaknesses, probably not the best for final frames quite yet. The base of the tree looks different from shot to shot. Sometimes it struggles with emotional nuance and getting the facial expressions perfect, especially when you're directing characters to a crazy precise level. But then again, for storyboarding, it's perfect. It works great. This doesn't replace filmmaking, but it definitely helps us visualize what a film is gonna look like before we even shoot it. It's amazing. 
So the key value for this in filmmakers from what I see is it's not just about speed, it's not about shortcuts, it's actually about clarity in pre-production. So try it out for yourself, get GPT Image 1.5, now in Artlist. And if this video was helpful, please make sure to subscribe. We have a ton more content coming out to help you create better. And we have so many more videos on the channel if you wanna learn how to be the best AI filmmaker that you can be. Check them out.